The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. Hope you had a nice holiday and a break from the markets yesterday. Martin Luther King Jr. Holiday. Not a lot of people overseas there, I was talking to them, I was like, holiday, what, what are you talking about? Christmas is over. New Year's is over. I have no idea about this holiday. Here we go. Uh, let's talk about the British pound. Um, you know, John from Philadelphia is kind of, you know, really saying, you know, this sometimes when markets turn, when they kind of look this ugly, basically, on, on its lows, um, and uh, you have something to lean against. We pierced that, you know, Cots talked about, you know, maybe waiting for this thing to flush before it turned around. I wouldn't call that a flush. We never really got near the the Brexit lows from before, and now the rhetoric, and they're still talking, I believe. Um, in fact, let me just pull up the details of that so you can uh, know what it is. Uh, let's see. Speech will begin at 6.45 Eastern. So, you know, talking about not as much damage, basically, in a nutshell, um, by the Brexit-type situation, the pullout. Technically, uh, we've had a pretty good run here. Um, we bounced off these 12090s. Um, I think that now is saying that we may be putting in that low now. The next stop up, you've got some resistance, as you can see. Here at the uh, daily unfair highs at around 123.15, that you know you had some targets at 122.20, 123.15. I wasn't participating in this because I was too chicken to get involved with the British pound looking as it looked um, and thinking we were going to do a flush before we turn around. A lot of times instruments do that before they reverse, and I'm sure John Philadelphia would probably say that too. Sometimes they go in the wrong direction violently before they actually reverse. Um, so. No harm done. There's plenty of instruments out there to trade in general. But now you've met, you know, kind of gotten into the target-rich environment here. Uh, and in my opinion, you'd have to wait and see if we can get a close now above that 123. 123.15. The unfair highs of the weekly box are 125.09. That's going to be the big massive resistance area kind of staying in the fair auction trading range so that's the deal and uh if you don't, if you have never caught kind of gotten up early or you can catch the archives of their show too nico and page do the living a primal lifestyle what an insane awesome show i learn something every time i listen to it i'm going to start calling in because i have a lot of questions um, i've actually started using their advice and gotten on to more of a kind of a ketogenic type situation myself i feel fantastic relative to you know eating a, a full apple pie before i go to sleep at night things like that um but yeah i mean and, and you know sitting in front of these screens all day and staying focused and having your head clear and feeling good that is actually you know at least 30 to 50 percent of the game is just keeping up a good attitude and uh, feeling good is a precursor to uh, a good attitude. So take a look at that show. It's, it's awesome. I love it. All right. Here's the uh, Japanese yen. We're going to take a look at the dollar. Um, we talked about this 114, 23, 24 area on the yen and, and how it kind of was crowding this area, it provided a little bit of a kind of a bounce. But when you see things not wanting to stay away from those areas, you got to wonder about the long-term bounce ivity of it, if you will. Uh, 111.67.68 is the weight and back the truck up. Just put the stops in, maybe even put a hedge on and get long this thing. 
which means you would be going for the bounce of the devaluation of the yen. Um, let's take a look at the dollar. Tell people I'm on the air here. Let me get to the dollar scene. Okay, here we go. Uh, here we go. Let's go into the uh, continuous on the dollar here. So the dollar, um, you know, again, not really wanting to use 101.35 as a kind of caught a couple of good trading situations off of that getting down in. But now we're caving in and uh, 99, 95, 96 is the big number. And that's probably going to coincide that number down below with that Japanese yen pullback at the same time. Um, and I think you just got to wait now. You're right in the middle of a fair auction on the dollar. You're kind of breaking down the yen on the intermediate. So it's it's kind of a, let's just, you know, wait until we hit these lower numbers now, 99, 95, 96 on the dollar. That would coincide again with that yen trade more than likely right down here at 111.67.68. So this is kind of a, let's just sit tight now. Uh, take a look at the euro. All right, so let me get, get this pulled up here. So the euro closed back up in the fair auction last week, and we came down. It's getting a little bit of an empathetic bounce off the British pound situation, 105, 85, 86. So again, we close back in the fair auction. We come back and retest it. Last week's close, come back and retest. And, you know, this is something um, probably do not need to be looking at this from the short side at all right now. We talked about the next stop up and the place of resistance. If we didn't start breaking down and closing below that weekly and for low, it was going to have to be 108.002. That's going to be kind of the wait and see. Let's let the dollar come down a little bit, the yen come down a little bit, and let's let this euro kind of breathe a little bit higher. And then I think you've got that long dollar, long, long yen, short euro situation, and the British pound more than likely, if we kind of, if all these things develop like we're talking about, could literally be on a relative scale back into this one, 125.09. So you've got. You got no edge here at this stage. I mean, do you get long and trade these, you know, situations on the on the pound right now? I don't think you do, uh, and I don't think you trade the euro from the long side ever. So uh, this is kind of a wait and see. Yeah. So uh, just kind of trying to cover the bases of the currency situations here. We're going to drift over, at least temporarily, to the. Uh, Chinese currency here and um, you know it was really really scary to try to get long this thing anymore the six six point nine is a seven Joey had talked been on the show talked about that was just gonna you know almost be government intervention time at that point um, right now here's the one uh, six point eight five one nine you've got the back of the truck up at six point eight one oh five on the long term uh, the daily obviously has broken down again here so we're gonna just kind of wait and see on the one and uh, try to pick it up lower. We'll be right back. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now you can get a two week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. 
Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high definition video giving you crystal clear charts as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. And uh, they are just taking this Chinese currency back to the just to back the truck up number here, 6.8105. I think that's going to be extremely interesting. As these, as, as these other currencies, as we talked about, are kind of lining up to, to get into those relativity ripe inflection point areas. It's going to be really cool to see this unfold, I hope. Here we go. <laughs> All right. So let's go back to the... Uh, the S&Ps here. So, you know, we got the inauguration coming up. Um, the VIX is kind of starting to climb a little bit here. Let's, we're, we're back above 12. Um, let's see, here we go. Okay. So, you know, we talked about when we get into this kind of sub 12 number, you got to start looking at volatility plays. I mean, this could rattle around and actually go lower, but you know, the odds are, and the percentages are really in your favor. And we've talked about this, you know, what's the best trade on the books? I mean, the markets could, you know, if nothing happens at the inauguration um, and everything kind of goes through and Trump lives through it, <laughs> I hate to say that, but I think the markets are trying to wait and see. Also, if, uh, you know, these these crazy, in my opinion, people that are, pro, you know, congressmen are protesting the validity, you know, it's just nuts, man. It's time for this country to pull together no matter what. And that's, you know, so I think the markets are, that's again my opinion, that's it for the political scene. Um, you know, the market, there's going to be, I think there's going to be an increase in volatility here. And, and you know, the S&Ps could go straight up, but they could go straight down. But I think the, you know, the volatility play, when you've got a chance to buy volatility, at these lows, you almost have to blindly do it and give yourself some room, give yourself a little time for it to happen instead of trying to guess. You know, the, the S&Ps, you got to just kind of take it for what it's worth. I mean, we are, you know, looking pretty longish here. Um, but, you know, they could fall apart and, you know, we're kind of compressing up into the highs. They could fall apart and start doing some technical damage, getting below 223780. That could happen quickly. Uh, and then everybody's kind of running for the door at the same time. So you don't know. It, it, it's a little bit easier 
you always try to figure out what's the easier trade. So the easier trade right now is probably to play around with the, the VIX um, or look at, you know, the volatility of some, you know, buying the volatility of some strangles on the S&P. I mean, I looked at them the other day. I actually bought some myself. So, we're you know, I'm looking at some pretty wide ranges out past March, uh, just kind of waiting for something to happen. And uh, don't put too much stress into it. Here's crude. Um, we're kind of, again, you know, we, we did close last week right on the number there, and we're kind of edging higher now, getting back above 52.26. I've been a little bit more long-minded on this than short-minded if you watch this show. So now you've got a decent plan, chase, chance to play defense again. Some news out on the oil markets. And let me just recite some of that. Uh, oil markets, this is coming from uh, OPEC's Secretary General. OPEC, <laughs> which who knows if this is, you know, th th this is a it's decent news for the oil market. Um, oil markets are going to stabilize this year, according to OPEC's Secretary General. Speaking in Venezuela, Mohamed Barquindo also voiced optimism that OPEC economies will improve as a result of last year's producer agreement, blah, blah, blah. So, all is getting a little bit of a bounce off some fundamental news there, but you also have some technical situations that you can also kind of back that up with from trading it from one side, trying to now, you know, block out the short side. We didn't close in the fair auction last week, and that's a big deal. And if you look at this from the long side, um, you know, kind of S&P-ish looking there, spinning around consolidating near the highs could have another run let's take a look at the 10 year all right so here you know a couple of weeks ago we talked about this trade being pretty ripe down here and coming back and retesting that dmz between the weekly unfair lows and the uh and the daily unfair highs that happened and uh, now we're spinning around above this 124 14, 15. We talked about this possibly climbing higher. It doesn't have to happen this way, but your targets on this trade on the 10 year 126, 23. And let's take a look at the 30 year because some guys in the in the den trade the 30 year. I just want to take a look at the numbers on that. Where in the world is it? Here we go. Looking at the continuous contract. A uh, very similar situation for the 30 year was even kind of a riper situation a couple of weeks ago when we went back and retested that number 148.29. Talked about the ultimate targets, 156.01 to complete the whole cycle. But we also talked about, you know, taking some off around here a couple of days ago. We've got a new profile appearing a little bit uh, lower, which is kind of wild, actually. Um, but you've got a chance, 151.20. Again, this morning, had a chance to play defense on the long side. We're kind of getting back up into these areas. You know, can the 30-year go higher? I'm not a big fan of being long treasuries right now, but 156.01 would be the kind of wait and see, I think, to get short again. That bounce, 154, you got about five handles on that one, but uh, now yeah, I think you just got to wait and see and look at it from the short side around 156. Okay. All right. Let's hit gold. So, you know, 112, or excuse me, 1211, uh, that weekly unfair high. And, you know, the dollar, dollar really, I mean, probably you guys watching this show, I've talked about this a little bit more than I probably should have. Showing that strength while the dollar was getting stronger, and then the dollar comes off, and then we get that pop. So now we're really at the top of the fair auction on gold i this could go a little bit higher just to do it i think you know obviously this week we've reached 112 or excuse me 1218 1219 and backed off i don't see a lot of leverage here um at this point the dollar could sink a little bit lower so you have to kind of watch gold relative to the dollar right now and pay attention to that 1211 I think classically we should be just coming off of this, um, but you know you might go a little bit higher relative to what the dollar might do, and then you have to just kind of wait and see and look at it. So uh, gold's kind of maybe 
let's let a daily close at least get back into it or, and just keep your eye on the dollar. All right, silver. Actually, let's take a look at the uh, CSI 300, Shanghai, Chinese indices. Uh, I like how this reversal happened already. I mean, this is very cool, in my opinion. You've got a chance to play defense on this. If you're looking at some ETFs on the China side, I don't mind getting long here. And, of course, being able to play defense on some of those inflection points. All right, let's hit uh, silver really quick. Actually, we're going to get a break right now. We'll be right back. trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to tom o'brien's daily market letter market insights tom o'brien's daily newsletter market insights comes out every market day at around 9 30 a.m and provides tom's daily commentary on the broad market including the dow nasdaq and s p plus specific trade recommendations there's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity he'll give you the entry price price target and stock price of each stock and option trade with Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC-insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank bank is a member fdic and equal housing lender until recently it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in europe or japan for a bold trade on europe or japan that protects against moves in currency trade hege or hegj two times currency hedged leveraged etfs from direction investments visit directioninvestments.com today an investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. So, Going into the scanner, I want to just make a couple of comments here. Um, you know, we talked about that volatility trade, and we talked about, you know, well, this thing could come apart at the seams at any moment, as usual. But, um, you know, you, you just don't have, you know, a lot of internal reasons. We're looking at the breadth charts here. Uh, you know, just all kind of systems go. Um, 
drilling down into those and looking at technically where we're at on the index itself, that's why it's very difficult for me, at least, to say, hey, we're at a top and things are overextended or something like that. I mean, this just, you know, you, you're, in my opinion, you're much better off doing a non directional trade. Uh, and if it happens, it happens. Uh, if it doesn't, not a lot of harm done. Taking a look at the ETFs on the uh, U.S. stock market in general, um, maybe I can show you something pretty cool here. Mm, I'll pull it up on the next uh, next segment. Something new that I've been promising. Um, you know, as we look at the ETFs, the material is obviously very breath positive here, but uh, I want to start looking at the financials a little bit again, and I want to pull up the XLF. And take a look at this. Um, financials are starting to look a little sluggish here, and we've we've kind of gotten up into this 2387 and backed off last week. Market's not open yet, of course, so, so a lot of these things are going to change. But you know, we maybe do a little bit of a pullback in the financials. They've gone pretty hard, pretty fast, and it, and I know they're sitting on the highs here. But uh, taking a look at uh, the J.P. Morgans of the world, we've got a new profile that's going to appear today long term weekly a lot of these things are starting to have some lids on top of them as far as the internals go and you know the underlying etf that's associated with it so just wanted you to kind of keep that in mind if you've been long financials i'm not a big advocate of you know shorting something that's just showing all kinds of massive relative strength but uh, you look at Bank of America, I mean, that's kind of sitting there with the resistance. We don't have to explore the entire fair auction, but you've got some lower numbers that could be attained. Uh, from a trading standpoint, if you're kind of trying to time the markets and trying to time stocks and not an investor, you, you've got to at least be looking at this as, you know, we got to take something off the table. And you might have some contra trade short opportunities here. Let's take a look at Citigroup, too. <laughs> Um, Citigroup, same situation. You're going to have a new weekly profile up here, and that's a fact. And um, again, these are overhanging supply balanced areas that m most of the time are, are really explored. Um, I say most of the time, they don't have to be, but you know, I was just kind of monitoring this uh, over the weekend and over the holiday. And when you drill into the financials, you know, you'll see that yellow part right there. You start seeing a lot of you know, big names that are actually weighted pretty hard. And that's not, and let me pull this up, that's not a massive new box. You know, it's getting into the borderline. 15% is pretty serious, but we've got 14% now. So you've got to, these, this is information, I got to do this for a second. This is information that you're not going to get looking at anything else out there in the marketplace. And I really, really think it's it's something to pay attention to. So there's kind of, you know, let's take a look at Bank of America, too. Uh, let me make sure we got the right. Here we go. Yeah, Bank of America, similar. A lot of these, it's almost like they're mirror images of each other. And some of them have that, you know, new profile attempting to appear along with these lids that have been reached. So I see you know, zero reasons to still be in the financial sector right now. I don't, I'd love to hear what Tom has to say about that. Um, but, uh, fund, I mean, technically speaking, it's, it's, it's looking a little topish here. All right. So let's take a look at, um, and let's see, I think we had a world indices breath. Okay. So I'm going to go back into our indices heat grid. I'm going to go to the daily. Yeah, we've got, you know, some, some reds here, some, it's not a total like globe on fire type situation as far as breath goes. Um, you know, so again, I think, uh, the edge is probably the volatility play. All right. So let me move my computer so I can see this. All right. So, um, we want to take a look at also, sometimes this is an indicator in itself. When I try to look at breakdowns below profiles, this is weekly or daily breakdowns uh, I think we actually talked about target the other day yeah we did and the reason being is it was you know breaking down technically daily weekly that's actually still a decent trade 
I think we talked about Kellogg too. Yeah. I mean, this is one we pulled up last week. These are still on the breakdown list. Yeah. And again, things on the lows go lower. These are, you know, we talked about this thing consolidating down here and being in a downtrend, and then now it's piercing. Uh, a couple of these other stocks, let's see, Nordstrom, you know, obviously the brick and mortar situations that got just analyst wise hammered. Let's take also a look at uh, downtrend resistance, but not like an overbearing amount. So, I mean, that's another thing that's not causing me to get super bearish on the S&Ps right now. Bad Bath & Beyond, um, man, I just think you got a gift horse in the mouth on that one. Uh, Staples. You know, Staples we talked about was something pretty attractive because it was getting into the unfair lows on the weekly and, and similarly rallying up in the unfair highs on the daily. So kind of maximum selling point there. And uh, I think we were looking at this one too. Yep, that one had rally. I think we looked at this one. It rallied up into uh, unfair highs there on the current profile or the previous profile. Now it's reaching some targets actually. Haynes Brands. God, these are ugly, ugly situations here. Whew. Ooh. All right, so here's some stocks that have uh, been in a – let me pull this up. Downturn reversals. Uh, let's take a look at this one, St. Jude, STJ. Yeah. MCK, we looked at that actually the other day, and um, – we talked about this one. Let me pull this up here. We talked about this one um, coming into some support. I think we talked about this last week. Actually, I think you got better things to look at right now. There's, there's just, there's not a lot of downtrend reversals. Where's my uptrend reversals? Here we go. This is the one I wanted to pick up. All right, so uh, let's take a look at BlackRock really quick. Nothing there. Hewlett Packard. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for something to trade, I mean, I think this one can easily get that back down to 14. That's HPQ. We're going to take a look at some oil stocks when we come back, guys. Be right back. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, 6 videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. If you missed the first part of the show, um, you know, we covered the S and P's a little bit and basically determined uh, it's a volatility trade. Not really looking at this any other way right now. Down a little bit, uh, you know, eight points. Nothing to write home about right now in the S and P's. Uh, we were talking about some oil stocks. We're trying to get into those oil stocks here. This is uh, MPC. Marathon Petroleum Corporation, and uh, obviously we just really reversed off of some gap up highs here. So we're back down to, in my opinion, a really good trading opportunity. Let me pull up MPC on the uh, e-signal charts here. And we are not open yet, but uh, you got some things developing here. You, you, you're going to have some week, new weekly numbers pop up on the scanner based on that kind of new profile attempting to appear, but you've really gotten right back into it. And I like the way it kind of dipped into it and closed above here. You might want to keep your eye on this one for a long opportunity. It's a trading opportunity, not not necessarily an investment opportunity. And then you've got even a, you know, if you're looking to invest in this thing, you've got kind of a DMZ here, but you've got a chance to pick it off at 48.20 and then 46.33 based on your appetite for risk, of course. Going into a couple of other oil stocks. I'll get rid of that. Uh, let's, like, let's take a look at ExxonMobil really quick. Let's go into the Inch Lumberjay. Interesting that those are... All right, so I, you know, I, I, I'm a little bit more bullish on crude oil right now than bears. You guys heard that earlier. So 85.12. Um, yeah, I think you can play some defense there. I think you can get a trading opportunity up into 89 again. Let's take a look at slob, SLB, Slumberjay. Uh. Okay, so here's the situation with Schlumberger, not one to short by any means. I think you've got a long opportunity here at around 85, 85, excuse me, around 80, yeah, 84, 84. I think oil's going to drag some of these stocks higher. That's my opinion. You know, because I feel we're in such a non-directional situation and kind of a buy volatility on the index itself, you know, a lot of these stocks, I mean, that are pulling back on support or rallying into resistance, I, I think the market itself could just override a lot of these situations. But you definitely, these, you know, classical underlying instrument type situations, but you definitely want to put your odd, the odds in your favor and try to, you know, buy strength and sell weakness. I'm, I'm always a huge big, you know, fan of that i guess um as we look at some of the other things going on across the globe i want to take a look at the let's see if we can pull this up here 
the footsie. Obviously, with the British pound situation um, becoming stronger, let's take a look at this really quick. Got some prints at 61.43. Nothing to really hang on to here when it comes to the FTSE 100. Um, and this is the daily. <laughs> um, you do have some. Hold on just a second here. Got the wrong chart up here. 240. Yeah, that is the right chart. You you don't have anything to hang on to here on the short side yet. I think the pound could kind of drift a little bit higher. Um, but, you know, keep your eye on this for a new profile attempting to appear. You might have a chance to look at this from the short side with something to lean against. All right. Let's take a look at Apple. And then we're going to take a look at the NASDAQ after this. Uh, here's Apple. We've talked about blocking out the short side until some things lined up in our favor. Um, you had a new profile attempt to appear. Now it's in force. Again, I'm not, you know, not a huge fan of trading this from the long side right now. Um, so it's kind of a pass in my book. Amazon, you know, what a good two week span it had. Um, I, you know, I, I don't see a lot of leverage trading this one either. I got an email about this. I just think it's, you know, you, you, you've got better odds out there than this one. We got to look at Tesla. Um, this is one, you know, we've talked about, let's wait for some things to happen before we can start looking at this from the short side. There's a huge short interest as David White's been religiously talking about. That's, that's tough. Uh, a massive move up and breaking above profiles on Friday. I don't think we got any prints this morning. Yeah, we do. 236. So, uh, again, you know, kind of block out the short side on this one. It's not not a lot of reasons to get step in front of a train on this one at this stage. Like you can make a lot of money stepping in front of a train sometimes, but <laughs> it's uh, it's a painful game to play. Let's take a look at uh, American Express, another stock, financial stock. Um. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have to now wait really for kind of a dip back in the profile. I had an email about this too, 75.74, just getting a weekly close back down below there. Remember some of the things we talked about the XLF earlier. Let's take a look at Home Depot really quick. All right, so here's a, a stock on the weekly that's just been relatively strong, kind of spinning around up here. Um, I, you know, I've liked this stock from the long side. Once it started breaking out, it's kind of su been supportive around 134. I think we could easily get back up into 137, 32. But again, you know, we've got some broad market things to figure out right now. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ numbers really quick. This is the continuous on the NASDAQ. Yeah, so just you know nothing on the long term to hang on to up here on the long side or the short side so again this is kind of a pass to me here's the 240 numbers the the shorter term numbers 5047 and 5011 down below um but uh again it's kind of terrifying to try to pick a direction on these things right now johnson and johnson so i've been pretty short-minded on this stock and the reason is is um, technically, it's just kind of walked itself down relative to profiles. This is weekly, you know, nothing different here. We talked about 111.96 as targets. Uh, if you didn't catch this off the short side, 117.23, you're kind of, your risk reward scenario is not exactly great. We're trading 113.96, it looks like this morning. So getting closer and closer, you know, 112 is going to be a little bit of a take off the profits, concentrate bounce point on that particular stock. Let's take a look at some of the automobile companies. Ford. Uh, so what about the Mexican thing? Came right off those weekly unfair eyes. Let's take a look at uh, General Motors. We'll be right back, guys.
Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see, next on TFNN. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. We're going to take a look at General Motors. I don't, even though we're kind of closed above weekly profiles here, I don't see a lot of edge in trading this. I want to move into United Airlines or United Continental Holdings, excuse me. Um, this is what we hope happens, like on the Chinese yuan, that trade coming down into these, you know, weekly and for highs profile appearing below price action, of course, is pretty bullish. You got to be willing to pick battles around here. So, uh, United Airlines. Here's the uh, latest on it. Um, still like this trade from the long side a lot. But this is where the scanner is going to come into play here. It's going to find, you know, uptrend support. I'm going to pull this up. So here is uptrend support. It's going to find these things for you immediately. So here's, let's just take a look at uh, AN here. Actually, this one is not exactly the pullback I was looking for. Let's take a look at this one here. Uh, here we go. Let's take a look at this one. IPG. Uh, this is kind of another real good supportive type situation on the weekly and the daily. You might be able to get a little bit of a move up here, kind of off that DMZ. I have no idea. Uh fundamentals on that company but i just like the technical setup let's take a look at mastercard okay this is uh no horses out of the barn on that one 
Let's take a look. Let me just look down the grid here. All right. Seagate. Uh, so, you know, when I step into this one, I, I, obviously it's been lagging in the NASDAQ lately, but it could catch up pretty quick. And you've got something sitting on support. Profile up here below price action. So I'm looking at this from the long side and trying to block out the short side on Seagate. Uh, what else is in this group here? Hmm. Yeah, this is just Google. Yeah. Launching pad. Don't get short Google right now. <coughs> All right, just to recap, uh, S&P is non-directional trade. Big fan of that. Gold, um, let me pull this up. Gold, obviously getting into these numbers up here that we talked about were the original targets from leveraging off of 1146. I think gold's kind of a wait and see. You just got to, if it starts flying again, you know, you've caught a good move there. Sit tight. The 10-year, I think, could edge a little bit higher still. Um, to get into an area, 126.23, we could hit it. The 30-year, where's the 30-year? There it is. Got a little bit more to go here, but we've reached initial targets. That 154 area and backed off. It was a nice little scene to at least take some off from that 149 area that we started picking a battle on down below on the weekly there. That's the situation on the 30 year. Crude, still a fan of that playing defense around 5226 and lower to, for this thing to move higher. And if you're looking at drilling down even deeper, finding some stronger oil stocks to hit the dollar, I think we're going to probably drift a little bit lower here. And it's the back the truck up scene around 99.63. And that's kind of cool because you got this kind of Custer's last stance on the daily along with that weekly unfair high. Huge fan of picking a battle there on the long side. And that coincides with that British pound possibly hitting that 125 and some change area. The yen pulling back to that one. Let me find that number for you. The number on the yen, 111.67. Stay tuned for Larry. You'll thoroughly enjoy it. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.